You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. We are currently going through Dave Hunt's book, Yoga and the Body of Christ, What Position Should Christians Hold?, in this first segment of our program. And as we've been saying, the topic is important because of yoga's phenomenal popularity within Christianity. And so no matter where you are on the subject, whether it relates to your own involvement in yoga or someone you know who practices yoga, you may well find the information we provide helpful. Dave, you state in Chapter 7 of your book, and I'm quoting, in spite of the advertisements and talk about health and fitness, yoga's real goal is to awaken kundalini power coiled like a serpent at the space, coiled like a serpent at the base of the spine, ready to spring up to manifest itself through the alleged chakras, centers of universal force of, of the body. Now, what exactly is kundalini yoga or kundalini power for that matter? <laughs> Well, to put it bluntly, it's demonic. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no way you can explain it. Physically, it's a non-physical force. Uh, there certainly is nothing coiled at the base of the spine. Mm -hmm. uh, three and a half times coiled like a serpent. Uh, that's going to spring up when you get in the, you know, the proper state of consciousness, supposedly. Uh, this is the same occult power that all the occultists are in touch with or try to be in touch with. Mm -hmm. And Dave, as well, um, Eastern religions, mystical religions, uh, we have ki in, in, in Japan, Aikido, that would be a, a power. Uh, certainly prana that would be another power, the innate, even in uh, chiropractic. But, so this is supposedly a spiritual power or a spiritual uh, energy that we all have within us. But it, is it a reality? Or? Well, is Satan a reality? Are demons real? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, oh, for example, just jump to something entirely separate, but let's take a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Now, we've documented this in laboratories. Uh, the Ouija board, look, we've even blindfolded people and scrambled the alphabet on the Ouija board so their unconscious mind wouldn't know or their memory wouldn't know where it was. Mm -hmm. So and, for, for some that don't know, I mean, we, it, it's even a Parker's Brothers game. I think it's mm -hmm. still available. But it's a board, and it has letters on it, and then there's a... What do they call it? Uh, Planchette. Yeah, a little, little. It's a triangular, and it points to the letters on these, on this board, this Ouija board, and uh, supposedly communication transpires. Well, Tom, in laboratory tests, I see the reason I go to the Ouija board because it's one of the clearest examples. There is something going on. There is a power. Or you could go to a dowsing rod. Mm -hmm. Dowsing rod. I mean, we've located over half a million wells in the United States with a dowsing rod, and that, that's called water witching. Well, that's places. right. They know what it's about, and that thing will go up and down and tell you how deep you have to dig to get the or drill to get the well, how many gallons per minute, and in France it will tell you how many liters per minute, and how many meters you go down. You know. Uh, it, it, you could even do it over a map. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Ruth and I were in, when were we in Bermuda not too long ago? Uh, the groundwater geologist said there's no water there. I mean, they couldn't find any, and they declared there was none. A dowser dowsing over a map in Kennebunkport, Maine, uh, he located three well sites, mm -hmm. and they drilled. Those are the, that's the water that comes today. Uh, so, so, so we're talking communication here. There has to be yeah, some intelligence involved. Yeah. It's not just physiological. There's a communication of information. Mm -hmm. So we get back to Kundalini, but there's a force involved. Uh, 
And in other words, if a dowsing rod, well, there's some kind of a force that is bending mm -hmm. that. The Ouija board, well, in laboratory experiments, when they're blindfolded, they even put uh, like a plywood between them, <laughs> did everything possible. So you couldn't, there's no way you could be, and they scramble the alphabet, it moves even faster, spelling out messages. Uh, there is no way you can explain this mm -hmm. as some uh, force innate within the body that somehow is doing this because what force innate within the body is disconnected from the brain. It doesn't have any means of direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, but ho of course the goal of yoga is to reach this state of consciousness where you realize your oneness. Uh, yoga means yoke. So you realize that you are yoked to the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, I, I remember, I don't think I mentioned on the program, I may have, getting off the plane in Bombay, India. And I'm just kind of looking around. And uh, a guy comes right up to me. Your name is Dave Hunt. You live at... Wait a minute. Get out of here. I don't want to have anything to do with you. See, he could tell me my name, my address, never seen him before, uh, because the demons know where I live, and he is really in touch with them. So mm -hmm. uh, people can uh, be involved in yoga and say, well, I've never had any experiences like this. Yeah, but we can cite plenty of them who have. Mm -hmm. So the possibility is always there. Mm -hmm. So here we have kundalini, coil of the base of the spine. You get in the right state of consciousness, it springs up manifests itself through the chakras. Mm -hmm. Go back to the first statement you made. You said this is demonic power. Why? What would be the point of, uh, of demons trying to advance this, encourage this? Because the serpent's lie to Eve was, you can be like the gods. Right. The only way he can demonstrate that is to give some kind of power. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Look, when when I can get in touch with the universe by yoga, or through a Ouija board, or under hypnosis, or whatever it may be, who needs this God of the Bible, who claims to be the Creator, uh, and He says I'm a sinner, but yoga doesn't tell me that I'm a sinner. In fact, Hinduism says. There's no such thing as a sinner. The only sin is to call yourself a sinner. This is Hinduism. Mm -hmm. So it takes us like, it's like the Star Wars Force. When these kids walked out of that theater, one thought remained with them. May the Force be with you. Now we've turned God, if, you, if they thought, well, they, maybe there's a God out there. No, no, God is not a personal being who will hold you accountable. God is... Uh, the God force, mm -hmm. this force, and it's neutral. It has a dark and a light side. You can play whichever side you want, but it's amoral. So here we are. I can get in touch. I can realize my oneness with the universe. Mm -hmm. um, so in effect, it's mm -hmm. all of this is to undermine the truth. Absolutely. So the creator of the universe lays out information in right. his word, in the right. Bible. And right. all of this is antithetical to what the Bible teaches. So it's the lie that's, as you said, was first given to man in the mankind, in, in the Garden of Eden. And it's just being promoted uh, down the line, down through history. And there are dozens and dozens of ways Satan has of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't like yoga? Well, how about, uh, you know, something else? Yeah, uh, positive mental attitude. How about... Uh... It's called um, uh, divination in the Bible as well. Uh, a divination device. Why does a, why does a magician... Of course, they're, they're fakes, they're, but they can do amazing things. But why do they have a... For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website 